Welcome to the Prep Pigskin Report Podcast, hosted by Papa Pig himself, Paul Rudy. Welcome to PPR Podcast number 31. Everybody knows the guy to my right. His name is Burt Grossman, former eighth pick in the NFL draft, an icon in these parts. My name is Paul, and the guy in the middle, in the hot seat, is the blue, bluest of blue chippers, mm -hmm. Roderick Robinson from Lincoln High. Young man, you look like a man, but you are only what year in school? I'm a junior. You are a junior. Wow. Yeah. And you and and just for those who don't know the name, because you're going to know it. Uh, everybody knows it who watches the PPR, but you're going to know it a lot next year or this fall. You've been offered by how many schools right now? Twenty-two schools. And we're talking about the virtual who's who. Well, it would be easier to say who hasn't recruited. And before it's all over, you're going to have forty plus offers. I mean, that, that's simply amazing. And, and congratulations, Miami, just the latest. Texas A&M's the A &M's latest. You got to keep up, man. You gotta... Texas, which one's the latest, Rod? Six A and M. Got you again. Congratulations. And so... you know what? You know what? To because you know it's same thing with Trey Edwards. I mean, you get these kids that have forty offers, but the reality is they can have two hundred if they want them. I mean, you call what if you to say I want to go to this school and they haven't offered me? That's one phone call away. All right. So what's that like? I mean, Bert experienced it. Bert had a hundred plus offers. I had no offers. Well, what's it like to be the prettiest girl in class? It's a blessing. I, I thank God for it every day. I thank my parents for it. I thank my coaches for it, especially all my teammates. To be in this position, it, it really means something to me to know that all my hard work is really being paid off right now. Roderick, I want to put this into perspective. For Paul and I get to watch you every week. Um, and if you just watch on film, you see your speed and you hit the holes in your vision. But... People don't realize you're 6'1", 230, which is the same size as Bo Jackson, the same size as Herschel Walker, the same size as Jim Brown. Um, you're a junior in high school. I mean, do you worry about outgrowing the position, or are you just going get, to keep getting bigger and faster? Uh, I don't really worry about it too much. My parents, they're not the biggest. My mom is 5'8", my dad's 5'11", but weight-wise, I could drop if I need to. And height-wise, you know, I don't see myself getting too much taller. There's plenty of six foot. 6'1", six, 6'2", six, running backs in the NFL and college. So height-wise, I should be good. And weight-wise, I can just drop if I need to. And there's always Derrick Henry, too. You, don't, you can't outgrow that guy. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, know, you know, Ron, I, I was just we're, – we're, we're looking at – Bert just sent me this piece of video of, of Chris Olave uh, at the Combine. And he is absolutely being mobbed by the media there as, as a and, – and I'm thinking, you're, you're in that – Recruit. I mean, not since Chris Olave have we had somebody as sought after as you. Did, uh, how do you keep that from going to your head? Uh, my dad really helps with that. <laughs> my, my coaches help with that. They really keep me humble, and I just really don't let it get to my head because I know there's always more work to do. So knowing that, knowing I can always be better, I always strive to be better. So I really try to stay humble and continue to thank God for it, of course, because without him, I couldn't do it. Without my family, I couldn't do this. So... I just have to keep working every day to get right. better. I'm going to put you on the spot here. Besides yourself, because I remember telling Paul last year during the, what is it, the silver pig skin, that I, as a group, I, I'd never seen the junior group better than the senior group. So just a few. You have Jax Leatherwood, Sayin, Trey Edwards, Stephen Cooper, Major Givens, yourself, Dom Nankill. Who's your favorite besides yourself that you want to see next next week, next year? The receiver in modern day, uh, Jeremiah McClure, he's extremely fast, one of the fastest in San Diego, and I think he can be one of the best players in San Diego. I really want to see what he does. He's a really good friend of mine, and I think he's a really great player. But you don't wait. You don't want to see it that close September 9th when you guys play them, though. You don't every game but that game, right? Yes, sir. Of course, no friends on the field. Hey, Roderick, are you are you sympathetic to the plight? of the people who work on the PPR having to choose just five or six guys in each category, especially in this coming year, man, that, that's gonna, it's an impossible task. Do you, do you understand that? I can only imagine. There's so many great guys out there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and you always end up hurting somebody's feelings, and I, I feel terrible about that, but geez, what, what, are, you, what are we gonna do? You can make up a, a podium of just Lincoln kids and just modern day kids. And yeah. just Cathedral kids. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. All right, so, but enough about our woes. You don't want to hear about that. What are you looking for in school? 
in the school, I just want great coaches that develop me not only on the field, but off the field, and not only as a player, but as a person. I need a school that has something that I want to study that I could succeed in not if uh, football doesn't work, and also an offense that I could succeed in as well. So another thing is a lot of a lot of guys, a lot of kids are, are committing before their senior year. And I think I read somewhere you wanted to commit by like mid-August. Um, you know, watching last year, especially at Oregon, you know, Grayson Holtson decommitted with coaching changes. You still think you might pick before the season starts who you're going to commit to? Yes, sir. I want to be locked into a school, you know, before my senior season, just in case anything happens. But if anything, like coaching changes, like with Grayson, if I need to, I can decommit, but I don't plan to as of right now. If you were picking today, who would be your top three? As of right now, there's so many great schools and coaches that I have great relationships with. I would not be able to have a top three as of right now, maybe in the future, but right now it would definitely be about 10 or 12 of them that just really have my eye that I would really be considering. He's smooth. He's deflecting us on uh, every I question. Know. Hey, I know. I, Damn. What's, what's, what's your plan B besides football? Say the football thing didn't work out. What would you want to do? Uh, I want to study kinesiology and be some sort of orthopedic doctor or physical therapist, physical trainer. I really love sports, and I don't know if I can live without sports. So I think I would want to work with athletes. And I, I like how the body moves, and I like learning about it. So I think being a physical trainer or physical therapist of some sort, working with athletes would be for me. So I, I noticed you still have a South Carolina area code on your cell phone. How did you end up out here from South Carolina? Take us through that. Uh, my dad and my mom, they they kind of separated when I was young. So I lived in South Carolina with my mom until ninth grade. And then 10th grade year, I just felt like I needed to live with my dad. You know, football wasn't going the way I expected to over there. And I was just getting to an age where I kind of kind of need things to kind of get going. So I moved with my dad. He was out here with my stepmom. So... I moved out here with them. That worked out well, I'd say, for yeah. you. That, that was a good, good decision. I, I follow you on Twitter, and you, you, it seems like family is a big part of what you're about. Can you talk a little bit about that? My family, they're my biggest supporters. That's what really motivates me to be the best person and football player I can be. They want nothing but the best for me, and I want nothing but, but the best for them, so I have to give it to them. That's, so why, you, I really, that's why I play. Do you have any interest in, in going back to South Carolina Gamecocks? I notice they're not on your top list. Is that is – that, no. Well, if they haven't offered, maybe they will in the future. But I was never really a South Carolina fan. But, I mean, it would be nice to go back home. But I don't really have – it's not really a big deal right now. It seems like Lincoln had the pipeline to Oregon is almost impossible to def- – I mean, I can't remember the last Lincoln kid that didn't go to Oregon. Is, that, is it safe to say that that, or- that school is in your top three? Uh. I wouldn't have a top three, but it's definitely consideration, heavy consideration. You know, having teammates up there, great coaching staff, coach I have a great relationship with. But, you know, we'll, we'll have to see. Hey, talk a little bit about Jason Carter. I don't think people realize, um, you know, these high school coaches, they don't make any money. He doesn't charge for recruiting service. He doesn't do anything else. And, and you know, him and Verlaine get so much exposure down at Modern Day for – kids going to college, I mean, it's amazing. And we always talk about, you know, they should be head coaches, but they're spending so much time promoting kids, I don't know if they could do both. I mean, how much does he mean to Lincoln and the players? He's a big part of everything here, but the plays, the, the offense, recruiting, without him, I don't know where we would be, him and Coach Dunn. They play such a big part in our recruiting. They can sell a broken car if they needed to to these coaches. They're, they're great at what they do, and without them, I don't know where me or any of my teammates would be. Wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, just watching, following him on Twitter, it seems like half the team has got a, a scholarship opportunity. And I think what you said was is more important, that those college opportunities are more important than wins and losses for a high school football program. You want to? Exp- well, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think we're all in this. I mean, it's great to win the CIF. It's great to win everything else. But when you can go back and look at your, you know, him or Verlaine or any of these other guys and say, I put 100 kids through college or I helped 100 kids get into college, I mean, that's really what we're here for. But, you know, we hear every year, you know, there's an opening. We hear Jace Carter, Verlaine. But those guys spend so much time on kids promoting kids, getting them to college, that I don't think they have the time to be head coaches, nor do they want to be. Yeah, I, well, I, well, I think the role that they're doing right now is more important. And I'm sure Rod can attest to this, is that it's more important than being a head coach somewhere. Do you agree with that? Yes, sir. So, hey, when you're not playing or working out for football, what do you do for fun? Do you have time to be a kid, kid? Oh, all the time. I love spending time with my family, watching movies with them, playing games. 
I play video games with my friends. I hang out with my friends, but I, I do like to play basketball a lot too. Are, are you playing? Uh, do you play high school ball? Uh, I stopped playing high school ball just to focus on football my uh, freshman year, but maybe in the future, maybe next year. So what were you, a power guard? <laughs> oh, yes, sir, I'm a power guard with finesse, too. I do everything <laughs> on the basketball court. <laughs> can, you, can you dunk? Yes, sir. Oh, of course you can. You can't. Don't worry. About <laughs> I can't, yeah. I, 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 You're still doing I the underhanded free throw. I can't even touch the bottom of the net anymore, Rod. <laughs> Rod, what's your, I always ask, what, what was your, I because mean, you remember growing up, what was your dad's favorite running back growing up, when you were growing up? My favorite running, my favorite running back? No, your dad's favorite running back. My dad's favorite running back, I think he said was Bo Jackson. I mean, he, my dad grew up in Alabama, so he grew up watching Bo Jackson all the time. So he really just loves Bo Jackson. And that's the crazy part I mentioned earlier. You're the same size as Bo Jackson as a junior in high school. And who is your favorite? Who is your my favorite? My favorite is Derrick Henry. My dad, uh, my dad's an Alabama fan. And I don't, I never knew why he liked Bo Jackson because he was an Alabama fan, but I like Derrick Henry because I grew up an Alabama fan watching Alabama. So watching Derrick Henry and then growing up to kind of get to the same size as him kind of just motivates me some more to be just like him. You're a 3.7 student, correct? Yes, sir. So uh, I'm curious, the things that help the discipline required to be a good athlete, does that also translate or trans transition to helping you be a good student, the same ha work habits? Yes, sir. Not only discipline, but hard work and determination, just staying on top of my schoolwork while also managing practices and all these track meets and everything going on in camps. I think hard work, determination, and discipline are, are key factors, not only in being an athlete, but a student as well. Hey, so tell us, you just came back from the Rivals camp up in L.A., and I think you took MVP and Major Givens took best running back. Do you guys have a little rivalry going on now, going into the season? Not at all. Major, that's a good, great friend of mine. We work out together. I love to see him succeed, and it, it's all love there. Well, you know, you guys are – he got a promotion on the PPR. He's not a major anymore. He's General Givens. General Givens, yeah. He's G General Givens. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> and there's another back that we forgot to mention that, that was going to be a factor in the silver pigskin watch list. I mentioned him. You didn't. Well, I mentioned uh, him in my I list. So, uh, with, you know, with so much football still to play in your high school career, are, is there any concern, I hate to bring it up, are you knock on wood, that, you know, one day uh, step in the wrong hole, get tackled the wrong way, and... And what you're dreaming about is going to require you to do something else? Do you worry about getting hurt? Oh, no, sir. I have a great support system and everything and great trainers around me. And they really work me out to prevent injury. They stretch me out and everything. So I should be good. And then, you know, if it happens, it happens. God forbid. But I'll be ready for whatever. I think you'll be fine because, I mean, watching you play, I mean, the most impressive thing is, I mean, you don't dance around. You hit the hole. Your vision, your size is just rarely seen. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think you're going to have any of those problems. Well, I, I can't hey. thank you enough for uh, making time to talk. Oh, hey, with, uh, last question. With the, the name, image, and likeness stuff happening, is, is that another thing that you're now focused on? I, I saw your uh, former teammate, uh, Jalil Flor Florence get very involved in it. I've watched his social media foot footprint explode. Is that something that right. you're uh, trying to duplicate? Uh, not really. As of right now, I'm just getting ready, working during this offseason, trying to prepare my body for next season and hopefully help my team with some games and go to state. That's, that's on my mind right now. All right. I guess we'll see him September 9th with the Trey Edwards Rod Robinson show. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, I, I know you're in the middle school, and we, we appreciate you making time for us. Thank you so much. I, I, I hope you keep the PPR in your, uh, in your thoughts, because we certainly like to uh, hitch our wagon to your train. Yes, sir. Thank Love you from me and Greg Biggins over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. All right, have a great day at school.